Hi, I'm Plami, and in this episode of Plami's Thoughts Zone, I'm gonna be doing something that I haven't done in a little while, which is review an episode of Charmed, the original 1998 uh, TV series, because for those of you who don't know, I've been on a little bit of a rewatch of all things that I watched as a child, like movies, cartoons, TV shows, anything like that. And since I started my YouTube channel, I was actually meaning to do a reaction to Charmed, but because for some reason the copyright for Charmed is super fucking strict, that was basically impossible, so I actually decided to do reviews of it, but I kind of stopped doing that after season uh, 1, I was meaning to do one for season 2, but I didn't do one, then I was meaning to do a review for season 3, and I didn't do that, and I've been meaning to do reviews for season 4, and I haven't been doing that, so currently I'm on season 4, episode 17, Saving Private Leo. And this was actually a really fun episode, and I really want to talk about it. But yeah, at some point in the future I might rewatch this show and do reviews for the first uh, three and a half seasons, because again, I'm on episode 17 right now, but right now I... I don't really have much to say about those episodes because I haven't watched them in such a long time, but yeah, the thing, I guess, uh, I mean, sharing my thoughts about this episode, you can pretty much understand how I feel about most episodes about Charmed, because there's this weird experience that I have about Charmed, and it's the reason why it's taking me so long to react, uh, to watch this show, because every time I sit to watch an episode, I'm like, oh man, I really don't want to watch it. It... It's not gonna be interesting, but then we start getting into the episode and watching the plot move and move and move and move. And by the end of the episode, I'm like, damn, that was actually a really fun episode. I wish I actually watched it sooner. So it's a weird experience where I'm like, oh my god, this is gonna be a bad episode. I'm gonna hate it. And then by the end of it, it was actually really fun. And I don't know why that happens, but that that's one of the reasons why it's been taking me so long to watch through this show. And I feel like most of the time... The way I've been watching through this show is whenever I haven't watched uh, the show in a while, I just end up binging like a five episodes at the same time. Uh, one after the other, I mean. But yeah, um, so far season four has actually been pretty interesting. Uh, and I've been pre pretty excited to, to see this season because when I was a kid, uh, when I was first uh, introduced into this show by my uh, female cousin, who was basically my, in a way... Uh, my sister for the longest time because she was living in the same house uh, as me with my grandparents um, I only watched like the first three seasons and not even all of the episodes from the first three seasons and a little bit of the fourth season because I remember as a kid seeing Paige get introduced but I didn't really watch more than like maybe a dozen of uh, the episodes of season four. I only remember as much as the episode in which uh, um, Paige uh, travels back to the past and it's revealed that she is uh, a white lighter as well. That's kind of where the furthest I've seen of this show. So from this point onwards, it's going to be pretty much episodes that I haven't seen as a child. So I guess in a way it's lucky that I'm going to be reviewing these episodes. But also at the same time, supposedly... The show goes downhill from now on, so yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I guess I'm gonna document uh, the downfall of the quality. But yeah, I wish I was reviewing it earlier, but as it stands, I only have a review for like the first season. But yeah, um, so yeah, this was a really fun episode. And I think the reason why I enjoyed it so much is because it focused on Leo. It's weird, but... For some reason, this show seems so much more interesting to me and engaging when it focuses on the male characters. And I don't mean this to sound sexist or anything like that, because uh, I am not sexist, especially because I'm also transgender, for those of you who don't know, because uh, I am non-binary, or at least I just refer to myself as non-binary for the sake of simplicity. But... I do want to be more feminine. I just am currently in a situations where I, in a situation where I can't be as feminine as I want to be. Uh, I used to be much more feminine. You can even check out my earlier videos, like from 2019, my earlier reviews of Charmed. But I currently cannot be much more feminine, and I'm gonna uh, show you and explain to you more at the end of the video. So stick around if you want to learn more. But 
I'm not sexist. It's not that I'm enjoying the male characters just because they're male. I feel like it's just because they're written better because most of the writers on the show I feel like are males. Because it was the early 2000s after all. It, it wasn't like it was today. Because um, like in season one, Andy was the most interesting character to me. Like I enjoy the sisters uh, interactions. They're great. Their uh, characters and everything is great. I enjoy it. But for some reason, the most impactful and uh, intriguing moments always come from the male characters like Andy, Cole, and in this episode, Leo. It's just so interesting. So I really enjoyed it. And this episode was about finally revealing the backstory of Leo and how he died and how he became a white lighter. And I'm honestly shocked that it took us so long to get this kind of an episode because for such a mainish or main supporting character, you would think he would have been given the backstory like Season 2 maybe, Season 3 at most, but Season 4? Come on. I mean, at this point Cole has had more backstory than Leo, but whatever. So yeah, in this episode uh, we learned that Leo uh, fought, I think in like the First World War? And apparently he actually fought uh, with his best friends and he even asked uh, the generals or whoever to put them together so that they can serve in the wars together and they were uh, but one of their friends uh, his friends got hurt and he being a medic uh, obviously helped him as much as he could but he had also other people to help and he do after he did what the best he could and left him with other doctors and went on to help other people his other friend who by the way is played by Hoffman from uh, from the Saw movies I'm gonna put a picture of him on the screen so you know who I'm talking about, but you probably do if you've seen the Saw movies. Um, he got PC and angry about it, and at the same time, the place where uh, they were staying, like the like the hut, let's call it, uh, with everybody who was injured, ends up blown up. So Leo survives that encounter, but his friends die, and they blame him for that. Which, in my opinion, is fucking stupid because in no way is Leo's fault uh, that they died. If he stayed, because they say that if he stayed with him uh, and helped him, I mean, they act as if if he stayed there and stayed with them, uh, he would, uh, they would have, have survived. But no, it just means that all three of them would have died, and Leo would have died with them. And he would have been able to save all those other people that he did. So I can kind of understand being angry that they died. But I don't understand why they focus their hatred on Leo. That does not make any sense to me. But other than that, uh, it was a cool episode. I liked the ghost hijinks that they did and uh, everything. It was great. I I really enjoyed it. Um, but... It's just that when I don't understand why the hell do they blame Leo, it just doesn't really work for me. And especially if Leo was such close friends with them and if he was feeling so bad about their death and he was blaming himself, why was he completely okay or at least not as freaking heartbroken at the end where, where when they were sent to hell, essentially? Like, sure, they almost killed his wife uh, because of everything, but again, I feel like if he was such good friends with him, he would show some kind of emotion about their destruction. And he really didn't. But yeah, there was that. Um, there was also an aspect of this episode where uh, Cole, who is currently possessed by the source or is the source, it's really not clear. And I actually remember this from when I watched this show as a kid. It was just as confusing then as it is now, to be honest, about being be able to tell Cole whether he's the source or not, because I don't fucking know at this point, and I hope we find out soon, because in the last few episodes there have been a couple of moments where Phoebe almost found out that he is possessed by the source, but the show just had to tease us for probably three or four more episodes before we get to the finale, before 
the source can actually be defeated. I honestly hate it when shows do that, when they just tease you, oh, we're now gonna do this, we're now gonna do this, we're finally gonna do it, you know, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it, and they don't do it, because it's too, too early. I hate it, I hate when it's done. I'm glad that shows, I feel like, nowadays don't do it as much, but shows in the early 2000s and, like, telenovelas uh, that I've watched, because I've watched some telenovelas, like, uh, uh, Pasión de Gavilanes and Tierra de Reyes, uh, which is basically the same story, by the way, for those of you who don't know. And at some point, I might review it because I love that story so freaking much. Love teasing with this kind of stuff. And seeing that in Charm just uh, kind of made me nostalgic about it, but it's also really fucking annoying. But in this episode, we had Ko as the source manipulating Phoebe out of the house because her not living in the house would mean that the power of three is going to be weaker. It's going to be weakened at the very least. And sadly, it's been a little bit too long time for me to remember uh, a certain aspect of the episode that I really wanted to talk about. Uh, in relation to that, because I found the idea that now Phoebe was wanting to leave the house with her husband, being very similar to what uh, Piper wanted to do with Leo, like a season earlier, they were also, she was also wanting to leave the, the, the main house that they all live in, uh, because she wanted to be on her own with her husband, and then decided against that. And Piper's behavior in this episode had a fun uh, parallel or something with her be behavior before that I wanted to talk about, but I just don't quite remember what exactly happened in this episode in relation to that, but it was a really cool uh, thing that I wanted to talk about. I think it was something like uh, Piper couldn't manage to be with her husband in a separate house, so she allowed Phoebe to try and leave like that and even helped her uh, to try to live a normal life and said that uh, Paige and her were going to deal with the ghost on their own without Phoebe. And obviously they had to get her at the end, but still. And yeah, um, Paige kind of didn't really do much in this episode. She was just, I mean, she wasn't there. She was actually the main person dealing with the fucking ghost. But... Most of those stuff were actually off screen, so she really didn't do that much. But yeah, I, I, I honestly really enjoyed this episode, uh, like I do for most uh, Chant episodes, but for this one, because it focused on a male character, and for some reason with this show, male characters are just more interesting, or at least have more interesting plot. Um... I, I just enjoyed it more, and it impacted me a little more, but you, as you see, as I keep reviewing the show, I feel like that about most episodes, so in terms of a rating for this one, I think I'm also going to give it like an 8.4 out of 10. It's a good episode, I really enjoyed it, it's definitely one of my favorite, I would say, probably, but I don't think it's necessarily the most memorable one, so I don't want to also overplay my hand with the rating, but it was a very enjoyable episode. So yeah, um, I don't know when I'm going to be doing a review of, an, of the next episode, because I don't know when I'm going to watch it, but you can definitely expect me to continue doing this going forward. But before we end this video, I just want to quickly explain to you something that you might, you might be wondering about, like, why am I dressed the way I am? Why do I look the way I do? And if you've been subscribed to my channel for a long time, you would know the answer already, because back when I started my YouTube channel, I had super long hair and I was dressing femininely in every single video but for those of you who don't know which I assume it's most of you I'm actually transgender I think I'm more of a non-binary rather than a male to female because there are quite a few times where I don't really feel like dressing femininely and looking feminine and looking like a girl and I just want to look like a normal guy but I feel like in a lot of the time I do want to look feminine so, for the sake of simplicity, I decided to just settle on non-binary, although I definitely really want to be much more feminine than I am right now, like, almost, like, and androgynous. But due to my current situation, I'm unable to transition, because uh, I still live with my parents, 
I tried to transition secretly while still living with my parents, but they started noticing uh, that I was looking more feminine and that I uh, obviously had my long hair back then and they were pressuring me to cut it all the time and even when I was growing it out, they were constantly pressuring me to not grow it out and now they are pressuring me to not grow it out again. Um, I'm un really unable to transition and there's no really way out out of this situation for me because I can't get a job. Uh, I've tried to but I just can't seem to get any job and even if I was able to get a job uh, I wouldn't really be able to transition in my country where I live uh, while working that job because uh, people here are completely bigoted and they uh, will harass me, they will bully me and they probably uh, the uh, the employers will probably never even hire me if I actually decided to completely transition. So uh, the only way for me to actually be who I am, who I truly am, is if I actually start being successful off of YouTube and start making money off of YouTube because I don't really have to care about what anybody thinks of me and um, I can just be who I want to be and dress however I want and all those stuff. So. With all this information and me telling you that I don't want to guilt trip you into helping me out, I don't want to make you feel bad about my situation and um, wanting to manipulate you into helping me out or boosting the subscribers on my channel or anything like that, um, I ask you if you're able to uh, help me out by donating to my Patreon or donating to my PayPal, which is some for that you will have to get in touch with me in the comments down below to set it up properly because I haven't really done that because I assume nobody's really gonna want to do that. But if you were able to do that, I would really appreciate it. But again, this is literally the only way for me out. This is the only way out. So, yeah, it's completely up to you. Um, if you can't help me out monetarily, then at the very least, I would. Uh, I think it would be great if you could help out in other ways. Like I said earlier, liking the channel, uh, liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and all, all those other stuff. But yeah, I'm not trying to guilt trip you. I'm just explaining to you my situation and hoping that you can help me out. But yeah. Uh, and yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, check out the link in the description to my Twitter if you want to follow me there, and to my Wattpad where I post my stories, because in addition to doing all these videos on my channel, I'm also a writer. And if you enjoy my stories, or you simply enjoy my videos, you can head over to Patreon where you can pledge support and help get the channel going, help support me so I can keep writing the stories you enjoy. But if you don't want to do it, that's completely fine. You can still help me out in other ways like liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and especially sharing this video with somebody who you think might enjoy it. And I think that's pretty much it for this video, so hopefully I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye!